Well, beautiful people, as uh, Chris mentioned, uh, 16 years ago, Senator Obama had the audacity to believe that he could upstage me at my own graduation, only to learn the hard way that that could not be done. But the message he shared with the class of 2007 is as relevant today as it was back then, because Senator Obama told the graduating class of 2007 that we could now take our degrees, the piece of paper that we were about to earn, and simply go in pursuit of the mighty dollar. But if we were to reduce our life to the simple pursuit of wealth, we would suffer from what he called a poverty of ambition. Senator Obama told us that if we really wanted to fulfill our true potential, if we really wanted to be all that we could be, we had to hitch our wagon to something larger than ourselves. And I share that because 16 years ago, I thought the biggest wagon I could think of was Africa. Here we have the richest continent on earth that is home to some of the poorest people on the planet. And 16 years ago, I had a hunch. My hunch was that if we could harness the entrepreneurial potential of Africa's youth, we might just be able to help change that reality. And so, my dear friends, 16 years on, the hunch has now been backed by a growing number of evidence. Oops. Uh, uh, we now have a book called The Prosperity Paradox, which was co-authored by a Harambian, uh, Efosa Ojomo, along with Professor Clayton Christensen at the Harvard Business School. And what this book does is it reminds us that across Africa, you have a series of innovators who are developing products and services, not just for the 80 million Africans in the middle class, but the 800 million who are not currently participating in the global economy. What this book reminds us is that if we can figure out a way to serve the underserved, a way to deliver healthcare and education and finance and basic services to people who cannot afford it, well, that will enable us to build resilient business models that could be of value not just to people in Kinshasa, Lagos, and Nairobi, but for people in London, Beijing, and San Francisco. What this book reminds us is that there are global implications to African innovation. I like to joke, before China had Alipay and America had Apple Pay, Kenya had M-Pesa. And call us crazy, we are bold and crazy enough to believe in this alliance that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Over the next few years, you're going to see a whole host of African bread innovation that is going to simply spread across the world like wildfire. Well, 16 years on, as I mentioned, we don't just have a book. We now have over 300 Harambians, as we call the innovators who have joined the Harambi Alliance. They are a competitive bunch. Each year, we select 30 out of 5,000 applications. They are a diverse bunch. Uh, as you can see, we have Harambians from across the continent in a variety of industries. They are impactful. As Chris mentioned, they've now raised over $2 billion and built some of the most iconic unicorns across the length and breadth of Africa. But two years ago, the Harvard Business School challenged us. Professor Sikochi uh, wrote a case study about our alliance. And in this case study, he reminds us that while it's great that we have hundreds of Harambians, the challenges and opportunities of Africa are so vast that they require us to have not just hundreds of Harambians, but thousands of them. Well, according to our admission process, we won't even get to 1,000 Harambians till 2060. <laughs> so obviously, that's not the way. But imagine a world in which not only we may not have thousands of Harambians, but hundreds of thousands, if not millions of innovators across the continent can learn from the insights of Harambians. Imagine a world in which um, the makers of African unicorns can create master classes and share their insights with a growing number of innovators across the world. They can help tell us how do you build high performing teams when you don't have a deep bench of expertise? How do you raise capital when you don't have deep pocketed investors? How do we transform Africa's challenges into opportunities? How, in a sense, um, how, my dear friends, can we ensure that the hindsight of Harambians become the foresight of the next generation of bold African innovators? How, in a sense, we can get the Harambians lab off the ground? Now, my dear friends, uh, ah, uh, ah, here we go. I would like to simply invite you. My invitation to you is very simple. I would like you all to hitch your wagon to the Harambians lab. Um, now, Dr. Martin Luther King told us uh, years ago, uh, if you want to be great, wonderful. 
If you want to be important, wonderful, or recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And I believe that, I, as you can see from the selfie, I've slightly modified it because I, feel, I believe everybody can be great because everybody has a phone. Now, do you have a phone with you? Please pull out your phone. Come on, take your phones out. <laughs> everybody got a phone. Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> take your phone out now. Please take a, take a picture of the, of the QR code. Can we see them? Ah, there you go. Yes. People in the back, I can see you. Do you have a phone? Oh, there you go. Now, well, people, there are four simple steps we can do. If you'd like to access the Harambians lab and let the hindsight of Harambians be your foresight, join us. If you'd like to nominate users or communities, uh, whether they be accelerators or uh, whether they be uh, portfolio companies in your country, on, in your, uh, on, your portfolio, on your portfolio across Africa, join us. If you'd like to sponsor content and maybe mine the insights of Horamians to figure out how do we measure impact, join us. And if you'd like to join Eric Smith and Jonathan Oppenheimer and the Alan Gray family and help us shape the Horambians lab by being one of the founding partners, please join us. <laughs> now, I'd like to believe, as I said before, that everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Thank you all.